We're here with uh, the gentleman Josh Hill. I'm very, very happy to have him here. Um, I appreciate you coming, What's brother. Up, bro? What's happening? Appreciate you coming, man. We grew up together. I'm very happy to sponsored you in your latest yeah, fight thanks, man. tour. It's awesome. Um, tell us a little bit about it. Tell us uh, what's going on with your uh, you know, battle career. So I just uh, I had my first uh, fight with Bellator, Bellator 239. Um, I signed with them in, in November. And uh, yeah, they, I finally got the call to fight in Oklahoma, Thackerville. Bro, you should have seen this place. was um, It's the largest casino in the States. You would have loved it. I would have loved it. <laughs> yeah. loved it. But literally, that's, there's 450 people in the town. Oh, wow. And uh, nothing around it at all. It's a really so, small village. So it's... Just yeah. a casino, and that's it. But it was sick, man. They, they put on a really good show, obviously, with the belts. Um, got the win, fought uh, Vinicius Zani. That's some Brazilian guy. He was good. I mean, tough fight, for sure. Um, I won uh, unanimous, but I felt I won every round and just kind of outstruck him and then outwrestled him. And, uh, yeah, man. Got the nice little ground and pound. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of more so old school. My, my, my last few fights have been mostly on feet. Um, but this one was kind of going back to the roots a bit and getting the takedowns and getting the ground and pound and just kind of beating up on the guy on top. Whatever it takes. Whatever, man. Yeah, exactly. Whatever right. it takes. You know, Double I wanted double. to get a win to start the Bellator career, so. That's it, man. Now it's like. And so what's your record now? Uh, 19-3. and 19-3. Not yeah. too bad. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good, man. Who's yeah. next? I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, they uh, they got a, like a stacked bandweight division now, so there's guys like Patrick Mix, James Gallagher, Ricky Bendejas, um, Horiguchi was the champ, but he tore his ACL and relinquished the belt, so it's actually open right now. So I'm hoping they do a Grand Prix, because um, they, they did a featherweight Grand Prix right now, um, welterweight, and they have uh, 50 Cent gives a million bucks to the winner. Oh, shit. Yeah. So is that like a little tournament? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's okay. like a, like usually it's eight or 16 men, depending how many they have, but yeah, it's uh, it's not one night, it's like a course of like a year, but... Still, be pretty dope. that'd be pretty exciting. Yeah. And uh, and so you're nineteen and three, you said. Nineteen and three. Now, so yeah. second fight is going to be coming up. Do you uh, know yeah. when? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm hoping. I would love it if it was like May, June, July, latest. You know what I mean? Like. You know. And and for our viewers, how long have you been uh, in this? How long have you been battling? Dude, we're getting we're getting old now, right? <laughs> uh, Two thousand. End of 2009 was my first fight. So first so, fight 2009. Just over 10 years. Yeah. And and when did you, when did you know you wanted to be a fighter? When when did that become a dream for you? You know, um, it wasn't ever like a thing that I planned for a long time. Like we met in, I was grade 10, you were grade 11 yeah. in high school. That's how we kind of kicked it off. And uh, I wasn't training at all then. But you remember when like. Uh, you remember Gavin? You know yeah, Gavin? yeah. He would yeah. come to the school and do like that. Absolutely. Day grappling. I grappled yeah, with him a few shit? times. So that's kind of my first taste of it. And he himself is, is quite the story. Uh, oh, Gav, yeah. Quite, Gav is quite a cool really story. Cool Defying shit. the odds yeah. and, you know, positive thinking. And, yeah. and that's kind of what you're about, I'm about, yeah. which is which is nice. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah. He, he kind of, you know, gave me the first, like, you know, taste, taste of, of it. it. And I, was, like, I always loved watching it. Like, I used to watch the prize and the UFCs and shit all the time. But... Um, and then, so, you know, when he came in, I was so excited to go on the mats, and, and I remember grappling with guys, and I did pretty good, so I was a tiny guy, too, like, but I just tried shit, you know, I remember grappling, uh, it was like a grade 9, 10 class, or 10, 11 class split, and uh, I beat, like, everybody, we did, like, a tournament style of Omarod's class, yeah. and I ended up going with Keenan in the finals, I remember Keenan beat me, he was an enormous basketball star. Massive. <laughs> yeah. But that's kind of where I got the first little taste of it, and I was like, man, I, I like this shit. It's uh, it's not the dog in the fight, it's the fight yeah. the dog. And, yeah. uh, you're one tough guy, I uh, you know, I probably have a little over 100 pounds on you, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, I've tried to tap you out way back in our university oh, yeah. days. Yeah, we had some good little... And, and we had some nice tilts, which, uh, <laughs> you yeah. know, bug each other and piss each oh, other yeah. off, but good yeah. days in university. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I just remember even like, you know, high school us uh, working out together in that class mm -hmm. um, and like you were 110 115 pounds soaking wet oh, yeah. you know in grade <laughs> 10 and you were you know we were pushing each other yeah. to the limits and 
you know, you were up to like 230 plus pounds. Yeah, that man, and that was, that was working out with you. Um, I was weight training. The, we had a class for weight training. It was yeah. awesome. And uh, yeah, I remember you, you came from Newman. Yeah. So I, was like, I don't know who this guy was. <laughs> <laughs> in my class and we just started, yeah, just pumping the weights. And I was, I was just trying to keep up. Like with you, first started with you and then uh, later on it was Wheeler too. Yeah. My buddy Brett. And he was always Another a big, strong, strong guy. guy. So I was Absolutely. always trying to keep up with him. And it just made me stronger. Absolutely, you know, like I, that. Obviously, you know, you're a beast. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think pound for pound, strongest guy I definitely know. Um, Thanks, so you know, it's, that, it's testament to your 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 willpower and your uh, you know your positive mindset, which is yeah. something I think definitely you know propels successful people forward. Yeah, I mean, in not just what I do, but everything. You know I mean? Absolutely, like you know touch on that before you go into a fight like obviously negative thoughts come into your mind you know yeah, there's obviously yeah. okay. at times you're like jeez yeah you know this is a battle i'm about to take on um but what does it take to you know overcome that to like you know you stay on stay focused and you know how much you know what do you do to prepare yourself for for that battle i could go like i could, I could talk forever on this because it's it, it's crazy the, the mental game but I would say I just started really like training my my mind in the last year and a half two years really nice um, I wish I had someone to kind of teach me the mental game when I was when I first started because I definitely lacked that shit uh, I won a lot of fights off of sheer athleticism and like kind of just will but like going into it I was not confident at all I was you know uh, self-doubting had negative thoughts and it really hindered my performances at some points. Um, but I, I got injured at the end of 2017. I tore my pec, so I was out for like six months. That. Yeah. And uh, I was like, well, what, what can I do? Can't work out. So I just started like, I'm like, I gotta work on like mental training. And, nice. Um, so I started, started reading books. Books like Mind Gym, uh, Rise of Superman, um, the, uh, the Mindful Athlete. Um, and they all, I just found them fascinating. And, uh, and then that kind of just continued to start listening to podcasts. What are a couple things that you read that really stuck with you? Just like how you, everybody does have those that sense of anxiety and nerves and things before a fight, but it's kind of how you harness them and use them to your advantage. And having some anxiety is actually a very good thing. Um, just not having too much to let you perform. So having some anxiety actually keeps you on your toes and it keeps your action time sharp. Absolutely. You know Living off I mean? small doses yeah. of adrenaline. Yeah. And it, and it shows you care. I mean, if you don't Absolutely. care, then it, you're, you know, your, your reaction time is going to be shit. You're just going to like whatever, you know, go through the motions. But, so you need that a little bit to, 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 to probably perform something. But, um, yeah, I started, I, I found it so fascinating. I'm like, man, I really like this shit. Uh, and I, I went back to school. I'm, I'm doing school online right now for sports psychology. Awesome, man. Yeah. So. I, uh, you know, I shared a post yesterday, and it was from uh, an influencer, Kerwin Ray. He's an Australian guy, and he said, essentially, we all need therapy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, a, I'm quite a proponent of it. I think that, uh, you know, we all have nutrition. Like, you know, some people get, um, you know, fitness trainers. Some people get, you know, nutritionists. Um, but if you look at the top athletes in the world, they have coaches, they have trainers, they have, you know, in, for basketball, you have shooting coaches, you know, you have sports psychologists, the best players in every single sport, which me and you look and we're like, the hell they need to coach for? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they still, at the top of their game, yeah. are still trying to get better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think mentally, you know, the hurdles that you have to go through to fight, to, to succeed in business, to succeed in anything, you know, it's, it's grueling. And so yeah. it's, uh, you know, I really put a big emphasis on, you know, training the mind the same way you train the body. It is a muscle. Yeah. And I truly do believe, you know, you can train that mind. hundred percent. Uh, totally a agree. Book, uh, a book I read, two books that really kind of profoundly impacted me in my life. Um, one was the art of happiness and, uh, the key word there is the art. Mm -hmm. um, so they're saying, essentially, in the book, it's a book written by somebody talking to the Dalai Lama, and he essentially says that, you know, happiness is an art. It's something that you have to train your mind to, to be. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you have a, a negative thought, you know, 
instantly think positive, think gratitude, think all you have to be grateful for instead of, you know, the stuff that's limit, limiting you. Um, so that book was awesome, and it, and it really re, reinforces the, 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 the need to practice happiness, to practice gratitude. Um, and then the other one was The Magic of Believing. And uh, that talks about, you know, really uh, training the mind to um, think positive and believe anything is possible and anything is achievable. And as you continuously, you know, repeat and visualize and, you know, you going into a fight and visualizing your, your, the way you're going to fight and, and the victory and, you know, you going all the way to the fact that, you know, you have a belt around, visualizing that, uh, you know, helps you and helps your mind, you know, almost self-actualize it. It helps it like... Your subconscious mind doesn't know what's real and what's not, right? So the more you do that, the more that you think that's happening, right? And then... What you think happens becomes your reality usually. Absolutely. You know, so it's uh, it's pretty cool stuff. Man. That's like, right. Yeah, I find it so. And, like, that's awesome man. to hear. You're going yeah. back to school for it. Uh, yeah. You know, even it, like it's obviously going to help you, but you know, yeah. how many people can you touch in life and and, and, and maybe teach it to some kid that's training exactly. under you? You know, you have a gym. Yeah. You're training. Uh, you know, you run Vision Quest. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of little little you know kids that go there that you touch and you inspire and. So, you know, there's... That's options. what I want to do. I want... I mean, I, I originally started as to help myself, you know what I mean, and, and to get past the mental hurdles, but, um, you know, that's something, when I'm done fighting, I want to, you know, that's be my main gig. It's just, not exactly. just fighters, too, but, like, all athletes, even people that are just looking to, for, like, business, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, to have that, you know, that tough mental fortitude to, you know, when shit goes wrong, and it will, um, to be able to keep focus. Really. Absolutely, yeah. man. It's... It's inevitable if you're if you're if you're trying if yeah. you're you know being ambitious if you're you know pushing the limits mm -hmm. you're gonna get some hit, hits and oh, you yeah. know you're gonna get knocked down in yeah. a fight you're gonna get maybe get knocked out in a fight yeah. um, but you know it's 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 getting back up and it's that you know Rocky Balboa mentality of like yeah. let's keep going right yeah. it's, uh, and, it, and I think for it's the people around you too um, is is a huge influence that's I think. You know, as you get older, you like, your circle tightens no matter what. I think, um, but it's mm -hmm. getting rid of that constant negativity around you. Um, I've done it. I'm, I'm sure you've probably done it. Just having that those people that are always complaining, always you know looking at things negatively, regardless. Yeah. Um, and that that shit will wear on you, and I think it, it's contagious, and and it kind of messes 100%. with your thinking. And I had a lot of that. And, and not even people that are trying to be, you know, bad. They're good people, too. A lot 100%. Of you know what I mean? And it's not that I'm just, like, cutting them off from my life, but I yeah. do distance, distance myself. Distance yourself. Because it is. Know? It is. It's toxic. And, and it's tough if somebody doesn't, you know, if they don't want to get help. Yeah. If they don't want to see the light. If they don't want to start a positive, you know, mindset, then it's like we're not on the same not, page. You know, I can't, you know, your friend. But to uh, you know, see you and hang out with you all the time, it's draining for yeah, us. Exactly. Um, I totally agree, man. There's so many people. It's I say there's certain people look for solutions and yeah. certain people look for excuses. Yeah. You know, and there's literally two different people. And I I like to be around people that look for solutions, not excuses. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's you, right? I say like, you're like you're a product usually of your 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 top five friends you're always around. You're somewhere in the middle of those. You know what I mean? Whether that's like financially or what happened yeah. So I think that's, that's pretty true, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So you you definitely have uh, you know dealt with some trials and tribulations. You're you know you're you're uh, you want to talk a little bit about you know some of your defeats and yeah, how hard sure. that was for you. Yeah, man. Um, I think you know I started this kind of just out of nowhere. Uh, I didn't have an amateur career at all, which is kind of crazy looking back now. I just had my first pro fight. Took it on. Two weeks notice, oh. and uh, it was on TV. Uh, remember the score days back in the back in the day before they got bought out. But um, yeah, I just took it and I and I won. It was like second round knockout. I won knockout of the night. Everybody. So I was like, it just kicked off. You know what I mean? And then I just started fighting. Uh, and then I was you know three and 0, four and 0, five and 0, six and 0, and I just kept winning. And I think that was kind of like a little bit of an issue. Um, you know, obviously I want to win, but being undefeated. People just started expecting you to win every single time, and then I put that pressure on myself, and I was focusing more so staying undefeated 
rather than just going out there and fighting my fight and to, to win, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that kind of played a part uh, with me mentally. That was like my first real like struggle and challenge if you, um, mentally at that stage. Uh, and then uh, where did I go from the uh, the Ultimate Fighter uh, in 2013? I think it was. Um, and I got to go on there. It was pretty cool. You know, yeah, awesome pretty crazy experience, man. You know, I hit a little my Vinny Chase, man. <laughs> yeah, remember we used to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was it. Was good. It was fun, man. Um, you know, I, I won my first fight and then I lost uh, decision. So that was actually my first taste of defeat. But it was an exhibition match. They don't. So that was one of the record. Really so. Kill. Um, and then uh, I won my next fight that, so I got to ten and zero. And then I fought for the World Series fighting title against Marlon Moraes. And um, I went five rounds. And you know, Marlon was kind of like this. You know, he was the champ at the time, but he was like this new name that was on a tear and like one of the, supposed to be one of the top guys in the world. And I think a lot of people thought he was going to run me over. Uh, and uh, I surprised a lot of people in that fight, and, and you know, I busted him up pretty good. And uh, I think that good battle. Yeah, before. yeah. I think that fight, regardless, you know, I lost the decision. Um, it really helped me. Um, that's me, like confidence-wise, it showed that I belonged with that upper echelon of guys, and I think it opened up a lot of other people's eyes too. Um, but yeah, man, that's kind of where it started. And then I went on, I think, a four-fight win streak from there. Um, you know, having that defeat, that kind of took away the pressure of the undefeated. Um, yeah, I have not a defeated record a bit, you know? Yeah. Um, and then uh, I got the rematch with him, and it didn't go as good this time for me. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but, you know, the, the shitty thing about that fight was I felt that was the best I've ever felt. You know what I mean? But I did, like, I remember beforehand, I did let, like, nerves, like, get to me and shit. But yeah. once I got in the cage, um, like, before I was, like, I was a nervous wreck, and I was, like, fuck, you know, shaking and, like, a lot, of, maybe a lot of wasted adrenaline. Oh, before. tons, tons, yeah. But Which, usually, usually I've had that before in fights, and I get in there, and I'm, and then I'm like exhausted. Even though I trained for like yeah. a five round fight, I could go in the gym no problem. Yeah. Um, but then two minutes in, I, the ultimate fight, the first fight, that one after like two and a half minutes, I was I couldn't even lift my arms. So I just literally toughed out, you know, the next round and, and went won the fight thankfully. But I was exhausted. Uh, with this fight though, once I get in there, I felt really good actually. Uh, the nerves kind of went away and, and, and whatnot, but I just, I made one, like, small move, and, like, I changed levels, and he threw a kick up, and he caught me as I came in, and just, and then he finished me off, and the first time I've ever been knocked out or uh, even rocked, I've never even been rocked in, in, in training or a fight, so it was, like, a huge rude awakening for me, I'm like, shit, man, like, like I know everybody can fucking get knocked out, right, Absolutely. but, you know, you never think it, you can, it's gonna happen to you until yeah. it does, right, but... Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it sucks, you know, um, but hey. And was that like, was that kind of a time where you, you maybe questioned your, your, uh... Yeah, it was, I mean, it was hard. That was actually crazy. My, my wife now, Jen, um, that was the first place she ever came to. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, babe. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you coming? She's like, I'm coming out where it was in Washington. I'm like, all right, sweet. So she came out and then I'm like, after, I'm like, this usually doesn't happen. <laughs> Usually I win. Usually I win. Like, but yeah, so, and then the next fight, she's like, if this happens again, I'm never coming again. I'm bad luck. But luckily, I, you know, I got, I went on a, another couple win streak again after that. But yeah, um, it, it was tough. You know, it, like, I was like, I was more just, you know, just, I, I don't care about, like, losing to another guy. It's more about, like, at the time, I cared about what other people thought more so. Yeah. And I care about, like, no, oh, they're gonna they're gonna say this, they're gonna say that, and, and whatnot. And, but I think since then I've like, grown so much, man. I don't really give a fuck what everybody says anymore. And that is the mentality. Yeah, you exactly. Have, you know? Yeah, I uh, I truly, truly like it's good that you started reading those books. And yeah, you started because that's gonna help you so much. Yeah, like, totally. If 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 you're you know it's it's like uh, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan say it's like you know. If you're not willing to take that shot yeah. and be the guy, yeah. um, you know you'll never feel the negative and the, the hatred and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But you also never get the glory. So yeah. it's like yeah. you know you have to be willing to um, you know put it all on the line oh, yeah. with like regardless what people think. Yeah. You know I I, uh, I have uh, pushed myself and done some stuff that you know my parents when I like I, I bought my first house before I. Uh, 
uh, a rental house before I bought my house. Yeah. And my family and people were like, you know, you don't even have a house, you're buying a rental house. It's like, listen, like, I know what I'm doing yeah. and everything else doesn't really matter. I like to listen to everybody and take everybody's information into account. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you have to have your vision, your drive. And the people that are positive around you, let them in. Yeah. And the people that are negative, yeah. who gives a shit? That's it. And a lot of people probably, they, they their upbringing or their, you know, their generation don't understand like your mentality in that sense, right? Like most people are like, okay, you go to school, you get a job, you buy your house, then you live in your house for the rest of your life. Or whatever, exactly. You know what I mean? So exactly. it's, it's totally a different way of thinking that they're not used to. And you're gonna get some pushback, um, especially from especially from the people you love actually the most because they just they just don't want they want you to be comfortable, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, and because they care about you, but at the same time, if you want to do anything, you got to step out of your comfort zone. Hundred percent. To get anything big, you know what I mean? Hundred percent. And that's where that like, it gets tricky. The uh, the business like people don't realize, you know, like no matter what I make, yeah. if you're in commission based business. Uh, no matter what I make for even five years in a row, next year I start at zero. Yeah. You know, and it's like you're, you're having to put so much faith in yourself and what your abilities are and, and what you're going to be able to accomplish and do and really set your life based on, you know, your what you believe is going to happen. That's exactly like fighting with you're only as good as your last fight type thing. A hundred percent. And it's like, you don't, you know, next, it's like, should I buy that house? Well, you know, next year I start at zero, yeah. but I do believe I'm going to sell X amount of houses. I'm, and now I got my build license. So it's like, I'm going to build two houses and yes, I can make it happen. Yeah. And so you're always, you know, just pushing yourself and, and then I have to make more phone calls. I have to, you know, touch more people. I have to do whatever I have to do yeah. to make sure that I can take care of my responsibilities that I kind of set out. So it's, uh, you know, definitely fighting business. If you're not willing to believe in yourself, yeah. you know, nobody else will. You've so. always had that, from what I remember, you've always had that mentality of like, you've always been like a, kind of like, not like salesman, but like kind of salesman a bit. Like you always are easy to talk to people and you always like, you don't give a shit about money. <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> I definitely you don't know. care if you're, if you're like, if you're up 100,000 or down 100,000, you it looks like the same. You know Absolutely, what I, mean? I, yeah. I, uh, I truly am motivated by yeah. helping and, yeah. and by uh, you know I'm, I don't care. I, yeah. you know our buddy <laughs> and, uh, he likes to uh, he likes to paint the picture that I love money, but uh, yeah. he loves money. He loves money. <laughs> he loves money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's Little gonna smeagle. <laughs> he's gonna love this. Oh yeah. But uh, but no, he's uh, you know he's also a guy I'd love to sit, sit down and talk with. Uh, you know, a business guy that, that has pushed himself and his business mm -hmm. to the next level and, and done a lot of good uh, by, uh, you know, believing and, and, and putting the money and the effort and the energy into it. And yeah. Same as myself and same as you. So really do have a good group of buddies that are around us, which is, you know, nice. Scott McCovey as well, yeah. you know, pushing himself. Uh, and and he, he's with you at Vision Quest. Yeah. And uh, you guys have grown that, you know, from, a, from an yeah. idea to, a, to a, 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 an actual thing. Yeah. You know, and, and, and there's a lot of work that goes into that, you know, it's yeah. like you have ideas and you're like, oh, it's a great idea. And it's like, okay, well, it's still just an idea. It's, yeah, it's a lot of work, man. And, but it's, it's, I mean, you have to, at some point you got to like take a, a jump, you know what I mean? Take a leap. And Absolutely. It, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but you just, it's just like in like fights the way I see it, like when I'm training for a fight, it's like kind of like a poker game. I'm, I'm literally stacking my chips up best I can before the fight and I'm trying to build my hand the best I can and I'm just going to put it down and that's all I can do right there. Absolutely. You know, that's all I can control. Um, if, you know, I put down a, you know, a full a, house, a full house, this guy pulls up four of a kind and it just, fuck, that, that sucks that's that all day. You, you know do. what I mean? Like, I had a good hand, man, and I prepared, but it just didn't work out. But Absolutely. You know, you just got to stack it, uh, you know, get the odds, you know, in your in favor the best you can. Hundred percent, man. That's um, you know, I truly agree. It's all you can do is what you can control. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, that, that's yeah. That's I think I've learned that over the last year and a half, two years. Like really, that because I used to like worry about things that I couldn't control, and then that stress and that worry and that anxiety just goes to everything. And it's a waste. You know, yeah, and it just drains you, and then puts you in that negative mood. I had 
Um, it was actually, yeah, a series of unfortunate uh, events happened. Like, I got injured. Um, actually, I was supposed to fight. I was fighting in Russia. Remember when I was fighting out there? Mm -hmm. And um, I was supposed to fight for the Bantamweight belt in February. And they called me uh, late November, and they said, in two weeks, uh, there's a featherweight <coughs> on the line. The guy pulled out. We need someone to step in. Do you want to do it? And they offered me like, a really good paycheck. And they said, regardless of the outcome, you can still fight for the Bantamweight belt in February. So I was like, man, like, this is a chance to win two belts, make two really good paychecks. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. So I, I signed the contract, and then three days into training, tore the pack. So I was like, oh my god. So I, when I did it, I'm like, hey, I'm just out for this fight. It sucks. But then I re realized how serious it was. Put me out for six months. So I missed both fights, both big paydays, both chance to have two belts. Uh, and then... You know, I was out for, I think, July or August till the next year, and I was supposed to fight in August for that Bantamweight belt. Um, the owner of the company in Russia got arrested or <laughs> something, Putin put him away, some you know, Russian mob stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They paid great, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they put on the best shows ever, but yeah, so that fight didn't get, didn't happen. Yeah. I was supposed to fight September, uh, fight got canceled. I was supposed to fight in October, fight got canceled. I was supposed to fight in November, fight got postponed. And then finally fought in December, and I lost a split decision. Um, a fight that I thought I did enough to win, but it was very, very close. Yeah. Um, so I had all those things happen, and then I lost. And and that's that's you know, that's really draining, right? Yeah. Like, oh man. You're expect you're you're getting prepped, you're getting focused, you're getting oh, psyched, horrible. you're getting training going, and it's like fights canceled. It was miserable, and at the same time, I had a newborn at home, you know, and and so it was just. And not sleep in. And, and so then, even money wise, right? Yeah, it's like financially. You need too, some right? fights yeah. to yeah. You know, you don't take know care of family. Your paycheck's supposed to be here, it's supposed to be here, it's supposed to be here, it's not coming in, and this whole train can't cost you money. Um, so it was a time where I, I, after that fight, I really did contemplate like retirement. I was like, man, is it worth it? Like, you know what I mean? I yeah, love this sport and whatnot, but it just, should I continue this? And, um, you know, I just took some time and, and I, I stepped out of the gym for about a month. I went, I went away, got married in Mexico and just enjoyed the holidays and then I just kind of went back to it like with a, like a, a fun mindset again you know yeah. not so much like business it was just do it because I love it um, yeah. and then I just realized you know yeah and, and, I, and I knew that I was in my prime you know I didn't yeah. want to go out I don't want to be like 15 like man I retired way too early you know and uh, you've definitely uh, had some fun in the sport you know you've been able to train with some pretty uh, high yeah. profile names yeah man um, you know, in California, in, in Montreal. Yeah, um, lots of really... Name a couple of the guys that you've uh, you've thrown down with. Oh, well, I go to uh, Team Alpha Man all the time in Chant there. So yeah. Uriah Favors, Jim, so Favor, um, Joseph Penavides, uh, Lance Palmer, Cody Garbrandt, uh, Chad Mendez, Andre Feely, uh, Clay Guida, you know, all the guys up there, uh, yeah. Elkins. Um, and then and I got to go to Brazil early in my career. I trained with Aldo, um, um, Eduardo Dantas, uh, Marvin Sandro, all those guys up there. You know, uh, recently did a just, I was only up there for a day. I went to TriStar, uh, got to um, train with George during the classes. That was cool. George um, St. Pierre. George St. Pierre, yeah, <laughs> for those of you who don't know. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, just all throughout Canada, I mean, all like the, all the pioneers I got to train with, guys like Antonio Carvalho, Hominix, Sandy Stout, you know, Bruckman, uh, all, all the top guys that came out. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. So that obviously helps with your, you know, confidence level training with some yeah. of the best. Yeah, that's, that was, I think, a, a big thing too, is after the Ultimate Fighter, that's when I met Faber, because uh, Chris Holzer was on the season when we ended up winning the show. Um, you know, going out there and training with them and going and doing rounds with, you know, I think at the time Chad was uh, fighting I think it was Frankie Edgar, I can't remember who, but I was like his main training partner for that camp and, and going like five rounds of chat. So I was like, man, you know, obviously, yeah. I'm, I can I'm, hang I'm, with him. I can hang with, you know, I think arguably the second best featherweight, you know, ever at the time. Um, yeah. So that really gave me a confidence boost. And, uh, you know, touch a little bit on um, how much work goes into a fight, how much training, how much time, how much energy. How many sparring matches you want? How much film you watch? And you know, and then I'd really want to hear about the cutting. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, the cutting. That to me is the part. 
<laughs> the part that I don't, you know, I I, uh, I dabbled with some boxing. And I had one amateur yeah, fight, did, and yeah. uh, it was really fun. Yeah. Knocked the guy out. It was it was a blast. <laughs> uh, so one and zero, oh, and I retired. Yeah, dude, going out on top. <laughs> That's it. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, I, I never had to cut weight. Yeah. Uh, that's one thing I don't know if I could do. <laughs> so yeah, if you don't mind, you know, touch on some of that. Like, how is cutting weight? So and weight, how much are you cutting? And how long? And how fast? So, some guys cutting comes from a wrestling background, right? All the wrestlers used to cut as much weight as they possibly could just to get their lowest weight class, and then they'll balloon back up to the regular size and be the bigger, stronger guy. Which in wrestling, that weight does matter because you're, you know putting your weight on somebody with boxing it's not as much because you know unless you're really really clenching a lot it doesn't really affect it but yeah. in wrestling it does um, but yeah guys cut a shit ton man uh, I, I don't cut that much anymore I've got it down like perfect like, I diet down um, and I fight at 135 so I walk around naturally I would say probably 150 you know um, and then in training camps I walk around 48 around there I don't I don't fluctuate too much some guys bowling. And, and so you say you don't fluctuate too much, but for the average person to cut 15, like how, so you're cutting about 15 pounds? Well, no, I'll die down to about, I'd say 42, 41, and I'll cut seven, seven pounds, pounds of water. Whatever. And how long in that period? Like what are you, one day you're cutting seven yeah, pounds? overnight, basically. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. So to the average person, you know, losing seven pounds would take you like a month. Yeah. People or, yeah, or they months. always say, I wish I could lose seven pounds. It's all water, right? So, okay. But but still, like, you know, how does that look? How how exhausting <laughs> how exhausting is that? You know, how much how much willpower and like, you know, yeah. heart do you need to have to sit in the sauna, you know, for it, it sucks. I remember when I first started, uh, I cut to thirty five from about forty nine. Straight water, oh no God. dieting at all. I didn't know how to diet or anything. Like that. I thought like, just not eating cheeseburgers was dieting, right? Eating <laughs> <laughs> Oreos, but uh, that sucked, man. I remember like just sitting in the sauna, and we did it like the shittiest way possible, just sitting in the sauna and dying, basically, and then going on the treadmill with, with all your your sauna suit on, all your tracksuit, just just sweating, man, uh, and that sucked. I remember like literally one time uh, at the weigh-ins, like they had to like. I couldn't even like barely stand up. I was just like, and I got on the scale, and then oh, it was just it was horrible. Man. Yeah, but, absolutely. But now, like at the weigh-ins, I got energy. I'm moving around. Like I, I don't feel that bad. It's still not fun, you know, because you're dehydrated, thirsty, you want to eat. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I got it down now too. It's it's not hard at all. But I know some guys still, like they kill themselves to make weight, man. And they yeah. they like I said, I don't balloon up too much in between fights, and I'm always training. Some guys take a long time off. And then they come back to a trip. They get in shape to get in shape for a fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so I don't ever, ever do that. I, I don't like that at all. But I know some guys that... Well, you always, uh, you always want to have your shirt off, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised we're not right. filming this with your shirt <laughs> off, man. Can we do that? Yeah. <laughs> so you always yeah. have to have that six-pack, yeah, Joe. Yeah. So, so then there's very little to cut when you're, when you're ready <laughs> yeah. for your battle. That's it. Man. Just got to stay, you know... Beats ready. That's <laughs> but yeah, so like to cut seven pounds, are yeah. you are you in there for you know five hours or like? So what I do now is I go I go in a really really hot bath. Yeah. And I put some Epsom salts in there and I just sit in there for about fifteen minutes and I just start sweating. That just opens the pores yeah. up and, and then just you know your body you're in a hot environment right so you start sweating and then I'll hop out and I'll put some sweet sweat on, um, throw my sweet sweat. sweat on. Yeah, it just uh, basically opens up your pores, helps you yeah. sweat more. Yeah, and uh, I, I put um, some my sauna suit on, track suit on. Then I go like lay down and I wrap up in a whole bunch of blankets and like a mummy to sit there and watch TV. And uh, you just sweat, right? Because it's like a little cocoon. Yeah. So I usually do that um, that cycle, those two, and then usually do it about twice. This last one I only did it uh, like one and a half. Um, it was easy; it just came right off. But uh, yeah, I'll do that, and I'll, I'll be on weight. But sometimes you know guys will go and have to go and sit in the sauna for a long. Time. So you're not even needing to do the sauna? No, anymore. I haven't done it the last uh, two now. So well, that's really good. Yeah, it's a lot that's easier. Really yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. I uh, I remember you know going to the sauna and seeing I forget where it was, but watching them with the credit. It's probably Brock, right? I think it was. Yeah, it was at Brock. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you see them with the credit cards, yeah. like <laughs> peeling the sweat <laughs> off their body yeah. and, uh, and and sitting there. I never understood that really. I guess it's just the sweat more. I guess, but like, I, guess. I never did that shit. Yeah. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Good. Yeah. I don't want to wipe. <laughs> yeah. So at that, so in those periods, you're not drinking any water. No. Like you're just 
So yeah. that's, that's tough on the so body. I do about 24 hours without any fluid. Wow. Yeah. So that, I, I'll eat a bit that day. Like, I just get some energy in me to, to continue if I have to do more. But yeah, the, you're cutting that. At first, you're hungry and you got that, like, you're craving shit. You know, you're walking by, like, you know, like, paste donuts, like, oh my God, <laughs> I want to eat that. But then after you hit a point and it just switches to thirst. And then you don't even care about food, just like, give me a drink. You know? Just funny how the brain tells yeah, you what it needs. Yeah. Not supposed to your body's not supposed to not have water in it. Right? So, hundred percent. Yeah. So that's a you know that in a, in and itself is a fight within the fight. Yeah, man. A lot of guys, their biggest battle is is the scale beforehand. I wish we didn't have this this stuff. Like, I really wish we got rid of weight cuts. I would be cool if you know if we had same day weigh-ins, and I fought at one forty-five because I I'd be walking around at forty six forty seven anyway. Yeah. Um, but the, then there's gonna be guys that try to cut that day. And then they go in the cage, and that's even more dangerous, right? So okay. it's, it's hard to, yeah. It's so hard to know what to do. and that's Because you got some guys that are cutting 20, 30 pounds, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, big, you know. Big time. And so what, then the next day they're just doing the best they can to, to, to get back yeah. into the best shape. So. A lot of guys I beat just to get that fluid back in them quickly, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I know some guys that, like I remember, you know, Linden, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I remember his, he dropped to 135. And he was always a little bigger than me, but yeah. he was a weight class bigger. And uh, he, he weighed in at 36 or whatever, and uh, I think he went back up to 161. Wow. Yeah, that was wow. a huge, huge kickback, man. That's, yeah. a, that's a lot. That man. was the biggest I think I've ever seen. That's yeah. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. The biggest I ever got, it was 151. That was the biggest ever after. And that's I, uh, I ended up fighting way late in the night, and I just yeah. was eating more. But that's the biggest I ever got. And uh, so I'd like... Are you watching a ton of film on your opponents before the fights? I used to do that quite a bit, and then I found it like just I didn't like it anymore. It kind of messed with me mentally. Yeah, I'd start worrying too much about what they're doing, and, and but and not so, like feeling the fight. Yeah, and I'm just I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do rather than I'm just not gonna worry about what he does. So now you know I look at the guy, and I see you know is he southpaw? Is he orthodox? Is he more striker based, wrestling based? Uh, a couple little tendencies that it may be something he always goes to. Yep. Maybe he's a big kicker or something like that. Super but nice. for the most part, it's like, you know, I'll be wary of those things. I'll know them. Yeah. But uh, I'll be, you know, just doing what I want to do in the fight. You know? So, so watch and kind of, you know, decipher what their what their strengths and go tos are. And yeah. But not get too in depth. I'll let my coaches really look at that if they want to yeah. get too in depth. Like this guy's always setting up a you know, triangles on the ground, anything like that. You know. Yeah. It's uh, I think it just if you start looking too far into it, and to be honest, if somebody looks at my last fight, like I'm adding more shit on every time, you know, I'm trying to anyway. I'm trying yeah, to get absolutely. Better. So I'm not going to be the same guy, especially if you look at stuff from years ago. Yeah, yeah for sure. Know, I'm not totally different. And you're uh, um, like sparring before. How how long are you training for one of these fights? For me, it's six weeks. I like that. A lot of guys, it's uh, eight weeks, twelve weeks. I think it's a bit too long. Um, like I said, I'm always training though. So I'm never like totally out of shape. I'm always in pretty good shape. But well, as far as like a fight camp, I like a good like six weeks. Like it's five weeks of hard training leading up to the fight. And that last week being like a recovery week and weight cut week. Um, and I feel that's, you know, I'm good with that. And in Sparta, are you going like, you know, what, what are you going, 70%, 80%? You have days, like some days we do small gloves sparring, like a little puppy one. So it's like we're hitting like, 30 percent you know just just touch it not even like because you know i'm just crap with those things yeah um and it's more technical and more wrestling grappling based because you can grab and get takedowns but yeah. when we put the big 16 ounces on you know there's some days some days where it's you know it's still not going crazy but then i do like a couple of days in, in the camp where it's like you know it's a fight you know because it does you need that for timing and when you say it's a fight are you going 100 or are you going yeah we're, you're going you know you going. got you got big gloves on you elbow pads knee pads shin pads so you have you know some, some protective gear on but yeah it's just more so it's not to try to kill each other it's just more so to get that feel of a real fight because that's how it's going to be right like if I, I can just do technical shit all day but once i get in there this guy's swinging to, to hurt me right so and that's the part that i found um you know is very uh deceiving you know it's you see sometimes that guys are literally just jockeying and and, and looking and, and not doing much um and that's that's exhausting. Like, <laughs> yeah. like literally, like this guy's gonna hit you, yeah. and you know, you bracing and th the, the 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 energy, the yeah. stress of it, 
that all can wear you down, right? Oh, like, yeah. you know, I, I would find like even in sparring, like even though I'm only throwing, you know, I can hit the bag for oh, yeah. a long time, of you know, but then I'm in there and I'm only throwing four or five shots, and then I'm like bracing for shots, yeah. and then I'm like, shit, I'm pretty gassed. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. So that you know takes takes a lot of. Uh, you know, it just get, takes get time. Used to. Yeah, yeah. And like, like they said, a lot of guys they said it takes them like ten fights to feel somewhat comfortable, and I, I think that's definitely true. Like I, it was probably my tenth fight that I actually felt in the cage where I felt some comfortability. But I think up till then, I like I was going on, you know, a lot of instincts and a lot of athleticism. Still sh showed some skill set, of course, but it wasn't until later that I could actually feel loose and comfortable and more like I'm in the gym. You know, that's what you try to want to do. You try to want to make it feel like you're in the gym, in the gym but you're, you know, you're going with 100% intention. Yeah. Um, and just because those nerves, man, nerves are you know, the killer for sure. And that, and that obviously, uh, you know, with the, the fight within the fight, you know, are you conscious of your adrenaline levels? Are you conscious of like what's going on with your, you know, uh, you know, emptying the tank too quick or you know, is that something that you have? You try to be, yeah. You try to be like I've had fights um, in the past where like I've hurt the guy and I tried to finish him, or like uh, in one of my fights, I remember I had the guy's back in the first round and I had the, the the choke like pretty much sunk in, and I was just squeezing as hard as I can for like a minute and a half, and then I didn't get it, and then after my arms were just like <laughs> bricks, and I was like, oh my god, man, I just get my coaches massage my forearms in between the arms, and so those type of things, it's just like. You know, you gotta. That's where like a good vet just kind of knows, right? He knows he's been there, he's done that, and he knows like when to amp it up, when to slow it down. And for me, I found recently is breathing, like slowing my breathing down. That's my my biggest thing. Is that it just our not, our body's natural reaction when we do slow it down, it, it calms us down, right? I guess what I would say, take deep breaths. And, and, and I bumped into yoga a yeah, couple yeah, times. Yeah. We've done a few classes together. It's awesome. Um, man. Yeah, like, you know, I really think that that, uh, I truly think it's the key to, like, living longer, to be honest, yeah, uh, right. you know, really kind of detoxing the body and learning how to breathe and learning how to deep breathe and bring oxygen to different, you know, parts of your body. It's, it's helped me tremendously. It's, you know, something that you have added to your, yeah. you know. Yeah, I would like to do it more. I just, especially in camps, it's so hard to fit everything. I have so many, you know, sessions already, but... It's definitely something I really do like. Um, there's a reason why it was all those people that do it regularly are like usually healthy and usually very positive. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. you don't see anybody mad at them, right? Yeah, right? it's a very like uh, kumbaya yeah. kind of yeah. place. Yeah, and I think, you, I mean, I need that for sure. I need that to be like, I need a sense of calm in, in, in my life, and uh, I think everybody does. But um, but at the same time, you're you're doing. Well, it depends on the class, but I do like to mix it up. Some of the classes are like more of a hard workout, yeah, and then some are just more like a relaxing stretch and meditation. So I like both. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you know, talking about calm within the storm, you know, you just you have a newborn. Well, not newborn anymore. Now it's a year, you know, and, a year and a half. Yeah. So uh, that added uh, obviously oh, another man. element to the. It, and to she's a workout man. Like it's I was saying before, like she's amazing. Like I love her. Like. Oh, she's the best thing ever, but she is a handful, man. Yeah. She's going to be crazy, I know. She's going to be nuts. She uh, keeps you on your feet. Doesn't stop moving. From the time she gets up to the time she actually does go to sleep, she's just... Go, go, go. Tasmanian devil, yeah. Which is, you know, it's a beautiful thing. Oh, right? yeah, it's awesome. But nice. It's tiring, for sure, <laughs> yeah, especially in camps. Absolutely. And uh, what uh, what's the future have in store for you? What, what are you looking to do in the, you know... So, you know, I... I don't like, everybody's always like looking, I don't like looking too too far ahead, right? Yeah. But I do have a sense of what I want to do in the near future. Uh, I want I want to fight, I would love to fight three times this year. I would love to get a fight like May, June, July at the latest, and then again, October, November, December. Uh, and I think um, if I get, you know, two solid wins, um, you know, especially over some top level guys, I, I can put myself in line for, for a title shot. Um, because right now it's sitting vac vacant, so, or if they do the Grand Prix, um, I would love to do that. You know, that would be amazing. Love to get in there. Yeah. So that's kind of like the main focus right now. Um, that and just growing my gym. We're looking at a new space right now. So we're. It's a good. I mean, our gym's. It was. It was a great starter. Um, 
but it's classes are just getting way too rammed in there and it's a good problem yeah um, but yeah we're looking at a new space to grow into now something bigger and better and uh, and then yeah just those two things and then I want to be done my school and by end of summer that's my goal uh, and then I'll just I'll continue doing that kind of stuff until I'm actually officially retired and then that would be my kind of next chapter and we're not retiring for a while no but man you know I'm, I'm as long as I'm, I'm feeling good and, and I'm, I'm doing well and I'm not the guy that's getting beat up by everybody in the gym but still holding on and he's trying to get fights and you know, I definitely don't want to be that guy and I don't want to be fighting when I'm 40 so um, I still I think I got another you know definitely a, I think I'm in my prime right now so I have a few years of my prime left to really make a good run absolutely yeah, yeah. I look forward to you know sponsoring you on your journey yeah man thanks and, uh, dude that's awesome I I, I uh I mean, I love sponsors. One good thing with Bellator is, you know, I can get outside sponsors and, and whatnot, so that's cool. But I love it when, like, I have you as a sponsor. I have another high school friend, Tom Clan. You know Tom Clan? Yeah. Yeah, Tom Clan sponsored me for this guy, too. So I love having, and I had the Bimbrook Pro Shop, which is like a little local, you know, skate sharpening hockey, hockey store. So I love having, having like, little um, small businesses, small businesses and local community local, yeah and people that I know like that actually means more than just some random business you know what I mean absolutely well I'm, I was happy to and I'm be happy to in the future yeah, and uh, awesome. Awesome. look forward to seeing you you know take yeah. a title down and one fight at a time obviously yeah yeah you know, as well as your you know your your growth with sports psychology and yeah. and the gym and obviously always uh, happy to see you grow man it's uh it's nice to see like it goes back to the positive I ideology and attitude, right? Mm -hmm. If 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 I wanted bad, like it's just you always have to want good for everybody, yeah. and I think that good happens to you if you're putting good out there. What I mean, I mean, I mentioned a lot of shit I do, but what do you? I mean, you're the business game is different than the fight game, but the same type of mentality is needed. So, what do you do to to grow your business? It's a. It really is a. You know, I've I've had I've had other agents ask me, uh, how do you do so much business? You know, last year we did over fifty five houses, uh, and with very little marketing. I don't market uh, a ton. Mm -hmm. All my business is organic, uh, and my answer to them is is always, I eat, sleep, and breathe real estate. Yeah. You know, um, so you know, I I own investment properties, I own multiple rentals. Uh, I buy, fix, flip houses. Uh, I got my builder's license to build houses. Um, I understand private mortgages. I understand mortgages. I educate myself, so I am the you know go-to uh, when it comes to real estate to anybody I know, and I can sit on, sit at the table with you know somebody with 20, 30 years experience, or you know educate somebody that's a first-time home buyer. And uh, I think when you know, same as the fight game. If all you do is eat, sleep, and breathe it, yeah. you're gonna be better at yeah, it. Be good. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, you know, I, I put a lot of effort, energy, and, and money into constantly learning, constantly trying to grow myself, grow my business, you know, grow my team. Yeah. Uh, I have a team now, which is nice That's because cool. you know I have too much, too many people to service. So yeah. you know, with them, it's the same ideology. I tell them, you know always look to take care of people yeah. if your goal is a as a as a salesperson and i always tell people i'm not a salesperson uh, i don't think i sell anything my my thing is you know i want to help you on your journey so when i sit down with you it's not like it's not you know oh, you want to buy a house sell a house great it's okay let's sit down let's talk about what your goals are what's your short-term goals what's your finances let's look at your expenses Let's look at everything that you have going on yes. and where you want to be. If you want to buy, you know, a million dollar house in three years or five years, well, here's the strategy, here's the goal, here's the plan to make that happen. And then it's like, you know, do you want investment properties? Okay, well, here's what we need to do to get you there. So, you know, I truly think it's positive attitude uh, and then strong work ethic. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and the more you educate yourself, and the more positive you are, and the more time you put in, eventually you get spit out into success. So yeah, yeah, um, should yeah. right? Yeah, is that I? I mean, real estate is like your your main thing. Is this building like your next? Venture so it's uh, it's been a, it's been a fun. I'm very ambitious. Uh, all my buddies know it's like, you know, my wife sometimes is like, chill. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Okay, great. But <laughs> you know me, I'm full tilt. Uh, I don't really. You? Have, no. <laughs> I don't really have a you know slow down button. Yeah. Uh, I'm usually you know pedal to the metal. Uh, I've got the Canada's water late at 30 minutes. <laughs> fast, so, fast. so back in the day, I was uh, heavy on the gas, but you know, the same in life. It's like, you know, I want to fill my day as best I can. Yeah. So um, I got my builder's license two and a half years ago-ish, two, three years ago. Uh, and, and it was something that I did a big addition on my house. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, you know what? I enjoy this you yeah. know it's something that I could see myself doing and it's symbiotic with real estate yeah. so it was like you know what maybe there'll be a benefit for, for this maybe I just have my builder's license let's just see what happens so I acquired the license you know did what I had to do to get it uh, a lot of courses a lot of time a lot of energy a lot of effort um, but got my license yeah. and then I bought some lots out in Thorold I bought five lots out in Thorold and I, I built two houses and sold them I'm on the third now, um, and then I'm building one house in Burlington, um, and it's opened, it's starting to open doors for me that, um, you know, wouldn't have been there if I didn't have my license, so I'm starting to see development opportunities, so I'm working right now, I actually just signed an exclusive uh, development uh, listing for, you know, 3.9 million, it's my biggest listing to date, it's, uh, it's in Stony Creek, it's uh, an exclusive listing, so, um, you know, it's kind of hush hush, but it's a, you know, it's a big, big, uh, a big property that, you know, that it can be 70 townhouses put on it. So it's been, uh, I learned about it last week and I'm literally feel like I've been playing high stakes poker with like the biggest players in the industry for the last week. Um, and it's fun. It's, it's, it's really exciting. You're dealing with like some of the biggest developers and builders in Hamilton, Burlington, you know, Niagara yeah. region. And I'm starting to bring in some Toronto developers as well to, you know, so it's really, really cool. I have my own offer. One of my clients might buy it. Um, and that would be awesome because he would use me to see it to fruition. So potentially, you know, I might build the 70 townhouses. And so it's like, I don't know where it's going to lead me. I just know I'm working, you know, work my ass off and, and good things are happening. And where it's going to go exactly, I'm not sure. Um, I do enjoy building and my mission state, like my wife always says like, and Brendan always bugs me, he's like, you know, there's got to be like a, a, an end game. And it's like, for me, my mission statement is, you know, to help people and to change lives. I don't think there necessarily has to be any. Like, exactly. I, mean, I think, like I was, where I, I forget where I heard it from, but like the guy's like, I kind of know where I'm going, but I'm driving in the dark and all I can see is what my headlights are showing me. You know what I mean? And I kind of like that, you know? And why do you have to have to have this end game? Because everybody that always retires always ends up working after anyway. You know what I mean? So that, and it, maybe you don't want to retire. Maybe Absolutely. you love what you do, right? And if you, if you actually get a job where you do love what you do, then you'll never retire from it, really. 100%. And I, I really do enjoy it. Yeah. it. It is, like I said, it's like high stakes poker. Because yeah. uh, you're dealing that's with some. Like, that's why I like it. It's poker. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it was funny because I used poker to, uh, uh, you know, kind of convince the uh, the seller that you know I could do my job very well for him at a high level. Yeah. Um, I, uh, you know, two years ago I made the final table of a yeah. world, world poker that was two event. Years ago? That was two years oh, ago. Already. It was a main event, uh, and I made the final table. So I, nice. I jokingly said, "Listen, like, you know, I definitely can, uh, you know, have a good strong poker face for you guys." I said, "I'm, I'm used to high stakes poker, yeah. you know," and I made the final table in a main event. And uh, I really think it does speak to uh, a seller, and I do use it in, in my negotiations. You know, when, when somebody calls me and they're excited about, uh, you know, uh, an offer, I don't get excited. It's, yeah. it's poker face. It's like, okay, like I had a client, yes, an agent yesterday call me about one of my listings, and uh, he was trying to fish for what I had, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, he's like, hey, uh, you know, what's your... Uh, what's your client's situation, you know, are they moving, they need to move quick, and I'm like, we're decently flexible, yeah. and he's like, he laughed, you know, he's like, oh, decently flexible, okay, you're not giving me anything, <laughs> and then he's like, uh, you know, what, uh, what about price, like, what's, what's your, you know, is there some flexibility in the price, and I was like, well, we're at 599, so, you know, put something on paper, like, send us 599 if you're asking me, yeah, yeah. and he was like, but there's got to be some flexibility, I said, 
said, I have no clue. I said, I, you know, it's listed at 599. I have a ton of showings. Put something on paper and we'll do the best we can. And so it's, you know, it really is like some some agents will, will divulge in information. And, and I do what he did. I actually chuckled at it and I said, you know, I said, I, I applaud your, you know, your efforts. Yeah. But with me, it's not going to go anywhere. And so it's, uh, you know, in negotiation, and I've studied books on negotiation, and that's why I think I am a very good yeah. negotiator. Studied poker, studied tells, studied, you know, the art of negotiation. And all those things Go ahead, allow me to be a good agent and a, a good business person. And so that's what I try to, you know, give back to my agents that, you know, work for me and with me and, you know, let them know that, hey, like, start reading these books. Here's a book that helped me change my ability and, and gave me that little bit of, you know, extra, uh, you know, skill set that when I go talk to a potential seller, they go, okay, wow, like this guy knows what he's doing. I need to deal with him. So did you ever think like we'd be doing what we're doing right now back in like salt and Brock days? Well, I didn't. I, uh, yeah, no, I, I kind of <laughs> jumped off path. Uh, I had a troubled, like my, I got kicked out of Newman. Yeah, right? and hey, so that's why you ended up over in my school. That's why I ended up at Salt Fleet. So, uh, and it wasn't that I was like necessarily bad. Yeah. Um, I just I wasn't focused. I didn't I didn't see the value in school, mm. and uh, and it was really difficult for me. And I got you know decent grades, but I didn't go to class. Yeah. And <laughs> so, uh, they ended up. Uh, the, what kicked me out was, um, I had seventies in all my classes, and this was in grade ten, the last semester of grade ten. And um, so I had 70s, but they failed me because I had 25 days absent. Mm. And so I was, you know, furious and I kicked the door as I left and the glass broke and, you know, I was like panicked. <laughs> so I ran away. <laughs> then they're like, hey, that's it. You're out of here. Yeah, right. um, and so, you know, I think it was actually, you know, in, in life, you know, it was, there was a turning point for me, right? I yeah. was, I was like, wow, like all my friends are at Newman, um, you know, this is a, you know, my, my girlfriend, like everything was at Newman. Yeah. And then it's like, I, don't, I, I suck at school. I hate school. Do I even want to go back to school? Am I going to go into trades? Like, what am I going to do? And then, uh, you know, my wife and, and my wife's uh, parents actually, uh, you know, influenced me to go back to school. And and they actually re reached out to the principal at Salt Fleet yeah. um, to let me in. So I went. And I still didn't go to class, <laughs> but I was getting eighties. Yeah. And so the principal called me down and he's like, you know, why aren't you going to class? And I said, well, you know, look at my grades. And I was in the eighties and I was like, I want to go to university. I just, I'm not great with class. You know, like I want to talk to people. Yeah. I want to shoot the shit and I'd rather just read and learn it on yeah. my own time. And so luckily he said to me, don't worry about it. You know, make sure you do your work yeah. and if you're not in class it's fine but please try to go to class and don't be disruptive and you know so it was definitely didn't expect uh, to be where I am today yeah. but um, yeah like both of us I think uh, have that fighter mentality yeah. um, and so. no matter what knocks us down it's like you know let's keep pushing forward yeah. so new school different surroundings it's like whatever this is just another another part of the you know process another part of the battle um, and so yeah it's uh, really happy that you know I found more focus and found my vision and found my drive and my passion yeah. um, or else yeah no I don't I definitely didn't expect to uh, you know be a builder at 34 and, and have a real estate team at 34 um, and do as doing as, as well as, as I'm doing yeah. um, at this age awesome. but had a lot of help a lot of you know a lot of hard work a lot of sacrifices and a lot of uh, you know, a lot of support, a lot of people around me pushing me and giving me, you know, courage and confidence. Cool. That's awesome. Family, right? Like, Maybe. I'm sure for you, you know, your your family obviously helped you, push you. Yeah. It's, and and showed you support. It's, it must be hard because I can only imagine like if my kid said, you know, I want to be a professional fighter, I'd be like, fuck that, no. But yeah, they no matter what, they're they're at every show, almost every show that they can make. And, my mom still doesn't watch, but she's there. My dad's a nervous wreck, but yeah, they're they're always supportive. My all my family. Yeah. And now your wife as well. My wife, yeah, she's she's man, she's a trooper. Like, she's helped me with my meals and and prep time, and like she, she comes out to like you know, almost everyone she can. And so she's she's awesome. Yeah. It's uh so yeah definitely like 
family helps you get, you know, past your little obstacles oh, and yeah. endeavors. Like your friends are great, and you know, mm-hmm. obviously they're there for you for the good times and and a lot of them for the bad. Yeah. But the really hard times, your family is. Well, like, you know, like especially like what I do, it's like if I win, I like my phone blows up. You know what I mean? And I have all these people and all these messages. If I lose, you know, I'm gonna get you know, 20% of those messages, but it's those same 20% that are always, you know, no matter what I do, how good I do, they're always like, talking to me, congratulating me, pushing me, you know, looks at my spirits if I lost, whatever. So those are the ones that I really, really truly care about. Absolutely, and, and I, like it, to me, family is so important. Yeah. With with my team here, with, you know, my friends, with, I tell, I tell my clients, like, I, I do well because I treat my clients like family and I do what's best for them, not what's best for myself. I treat everybody that way. Yeah. And I think for you, like, you know, having a strong family, uh, you know, value and, and, and support obviously allows us to flourish, you know, especially, you know, a lot of times for me, even like, I like to attribute my wife, uh, you know, her support. Allowing us to be free to, to, to pursue our passions and our and our saint bro to be with you. <laughs> <laughs> really imagine. She's heard that for seventeen oh, years, crazy. man. Yeah. So um, definitely, uh, you know, uh, really appreciate her. I appreciate you being here. Um, Thanks, man. Yeah, it's, it's fun. We could sit here for like hours and just see the shit. I definitely, you know, like to connect more with you and and, yeah. and, and, and look forward to seeing what's in the future for you. I definitely want to let, let everybody know what your next challenge is and, 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 and touch on that, but definitely really happy to have you here. Thanks, brother. Yeah. Looking forward to your next battle, brother. Thanks.